and welcome back to Turdferg Network. All right, today's video is on the empirical formula lab conclusion. So in this lab, think about what we did. We took a crucible, and we did some stuff, and you weighed it three times. You weighed an empty crucible just like that. And then what would you do? You took a piece of magnesium that was actually kind of silver looking. I'm just too lazy to try and make the little silver look. Anyway, you took a piece of magnesium, rolled it up, cooled it up, and you placed that in the bottom. And then you weighed it again, and thus our weight that you have recorded there. And then we put a lid on the crucible. Well, we actually cracked the lid on the crucible, and we attempted to oxidize it. So we let oxygen inside, and via a low temperature or a high temperature reaction, we took oxygen, reacted it. Why am I putting an equal sign? Wow, I need more monster energy drinks. Mg makes MgO. And so that was our goal. By the way, this is the whole answer to our lab. I hope we've got the formula MGO, but we're going to prove that. So we weighed it three times. We weighed it empty on the first time, and then we come back, we weighed it with the magnesium, and then this the very last time we weighed it. This should have been your heaviest weighing because you've got your crucible, you've got magnesium, Plus, you've got oxygen in that last weighing. So let's go through, and doing this lab is actually one of our easier conclusions we'll do. So let's go through and see if we can actually follow this lab and go through it. So first thing that we need to go here, it says that we need the weight of magnesium. Well, according to this, we need to subtract 2 from 1. So let's pull out my calculator, see if we can do this. So for me, it's 23.419 minus 23.295. That equals 0.124. So here is my first mass. So I've got 0.124. And then moles of magnesium. Now that'll be a calculation. I'll make that in a second. Weight of oxygen. Line 3 minus line two well that's very helpful so let's see if we can go back and do that calculation 23.490 minus line two which is 23.419 and that's equal to i just cleared it but i was 71 over 1000 so that would be 0 0.071 so there's our two masses at this point. So let's do something. Now, I can go ahead and do something. Two of those I can get into this table because it said, what's the mass of my element? And here's what we just found. In this lab, we used 0.124 grams of magnesium, and we combined that with 071 grams of oxygen. All right, well, that's fascinating. But in, remember, in the end, we're trying to find the formula for MgO. But we technically already know that because of oxidation numbers. It's MgO. But hopefully we're going to prove that it's MgO in this lab. We're going to try and prove the way in which magnesium and oxygen combine. But to do it, we got to be able to do something known as moles. So here's how you do this molecular formula problem. It's a three-step problem. Three steps in this problem. Step number one, convert to moles. Moles. Then we're going to get an answer. We'll divide by the smallest, and this will be the same thing we do on an exam. And then number three, we round. Hey, this actually sounds like kind of an easy problem. It is. So I need to get my two masses. So one more time, my two masses was 124 and 017. So let's do this. So my mass is point one two four grams of magnesium and then i need to take one more look i had point and these are you the same calculations you should make grams of oxygen and i know you're looking at this and you're going but isn't oxygen an o2 and yes normally it is but for the sake of this problem we're not going to write it that way so how do we do this step number one convert to moles well if you haven't done it yet, it's pretty easy. You just draw an X, put a line. I'm going to do the same thing down here for auction, X line. It's just like converting inch to feet. 
one mole of magnesium is, look up how much magnesium weighs on your periodic table, 24.305. I'm going to stop at the 3, though. And that's it. That's all I've got to do to convert to moles. It's just divide by however much magnesium weighs on the periodic table. Same thing for oxygen. One mole of oxygen on the periodic table, oxygen weighs 15.99994. So that means there's 16.0 grams of oxygen per one mole. So let's go in and see if we can't divide this out. So for my magnesium, let's look at what my moles are. 0.124 divided by 24.3, and that is 5.10 times 10 to the negative third. I'm going to convert it. 5.10 times 10 to the negative third moles of mg. Now that's fascinating. And again, moles is just a counting unit. So let's do the same thing for oxygen. Let's find our moles. And we've got. 4.44 times 10 to the negative third. So 4.44 times 10 to the negative third. And that would be moles of O in this case. All right, so step number one, convert to moles. I've done that. Step number two, divide by the smallest. Which of these two numbers is smaller? Hey, it's the second number. So I'm going to divide each of these by 4.44 times 10 to the negative three. Of course, the 10 to negative 3 is canceled, so I can just leave that off in my calculator. So what's 4.44 divided by 4.44? Easy, 1.00. And now, what's 5.10 divided by 4. Point, well, it's going to be 1.1 something. 5.10 divided by 4.44 equals 1.15, round it off. Well, actually, technically, I'm not rounding yet. But here's what I've got. Step number one, convert to moles. Step number two, divide by the smallest. Step number three, round. So that's all I need to do is round off those two answers. So round off 1.15 to a whole number. That's easy. 1.15 rounds to 1. 1.00 rounds to 1. What this means is I'm saying that the equation for magnesium oxide should be MgO1, which would be kind of a dumb way to write it. So MgO, which means I did a great lab. That's what I was going to. So what would you do? Let's say you go to this last step. One of your answers has got to come out to 1.00. What if the other one comes out to 1.97? Well, you really messed up the lab. But your answer would look like this. So your answer would be MG2O, which is a shame because that does mean that you've messed up. But anyway, that's what we're doing. Let's go back and finish filling out that data table. So the moles, I did that. For me, it was, let's see, this one was what? 5.10 times 10 to the negative third. This one was 4.44 times 10 to the negative third. Let's see. Once again, my moles was 5.10. It's 10 to the negative third. 4.44. It's 10 to the negative third. When I divided, I got 1.15 and 1.00. When I rounded off, I got 1 and 1, which makes my answer MGO. And I'm actually done almost with this lab. The only thing I need at this point is like a conclusion. And my conclusion is going to be nothing but, all you're going to do in the conclusion is, I found the empirical formula for magnesium oxide to be blank. And I hope that for you it is MGO. If it's not, you'll know. Uh, now, what about your sources of error? I'll go and tell you a very common thing. I'll if you if I see this on your answer, I'll know what happened. On your last step, you probably you probably didn't dry it. You probably did not dry it enough when you added your water in that one part of the lab. Uh, that could be a good explanation. 
Uh, usually the two most common sources of air are you something about didn't react all the magnesium that sometime uh, I'll be honest I don't know if I reacted all the magnesium what would be great is when you did that very last step this would be like Megatron if you did that last step and got 1.00 and 1.00 in my case I was happy with 1.15 at least that rounded that was a pretty good lab but anyway that is the conclusions to the empirical formula lab I hope you have got this down step number one convert to moles just like me divide by the smallest and then round off your answers and that's how you get your answer but anyway thank you have a great day and appreciate you watching the old turd network see ya